just flesh this thing out and don't worry we'll make sense of it all in a minute and I'm gonna smooth some of it out as well because I don't want to have a whole lot of peaks and like random vertices that could mess me up later I want to actually have a clean surface to, to work with so this is gonna be the potential pelvis another brush that I like to use is uh, Damien standard uh, and I'll go through and just kind of contour sketch in like a direction and a flow and go through with uh, clay buildup. That's another like essential one for especially anatomy stuff. So I'm just gonna fill in some of these uh, undercuts here just so that I don't run into any kind of weird problems. I can make things more exaggerate or more exaggerated later if I wanted to. Um, and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load that brush I was talking about. I'm gonna hit B and then load brush to bring up the brush menu here. And I threw it on the desktop. We're going to grab Alien Autopsy. So you can see I got a little custom icon. It's a little standard alien head. And uh, if I hit M, it'll bring up my whole library of body parts. I got hands, legs, arms, feet, all sorts of stuff. And so what I can do, whoops, my fat fingers open up everything at the same time. Um, I'm just going to grab something that's a little bit more complete, like maybe this longer arm, because I don't want to like piece together too much. And then it's like hours of base meshing and building a rough anatomy again and again and again is over. It's like, oh, I feel like making an alien today. OK, I think I shall just kit bash it. And then you just you know, work it into something new. So now let's, uh, let's put some hands on it. Oops. Uh, so yeah, you can see what I got in here. I got also like teeth and uh, suction cups, all these random like fins and flowery things and teeth and nails, all sorts of Just stuff. Just for the uninitiated, these are, these are parts that you could bring in that you had already used before. Yeah, this is all from another, like maybe three characters and I just right. cut them up and uh, turned them into Dynamesh and then I used Q Remesher to clean them up and make them a little bit lower poly just so that it's not terribly dense. But you can have like the full sculpted thing in here as well. Uh, I'm going to use the same hand that I've used on the, the beta character that you saw, just so that it feels like it's in the same world. But maybe not as long. Rotate that. And you can see, like, as I'm, as I'm dynameshing this thing, it's fusing it together. And then I just have to do a little bit of cleanup. And what I want to change here is the uh, size fall off. You can see here it goes uh, big to small. If I turn that off, the size here, and then snap the brush again, you can see that it keeps a universal like uh, width all the way down the curve. But if I wanted to have a predetermined size, if I set up a curve like that and then tap it, you can see that it's starting to taper down at the bottom and create like paddles and. So it's a really neat way of instead of uh, sculpting it out um, every single time, like you can have a, a tentacle brush or whatever that will actually come in with all of these settings and varying widths. And, um, and based off of your brush size, that will determine the thickness of the mesh that gets extracted off. So if I 
increase my brush size here to 45 and click on the mesh, you can see that it's pulling off quite a ways. Or you can set that down to zero, and all you get is a, a plane. But since I don't want that, I actually want something with some, some thickness to it. We are going to now, before I clear the mask, what I want to do is go to my visibility palette here to hide what is not masked, and then go to split and split hidden. So now the thing that I just drew is now its own subtool that I can continue working on. And it's also Dynamesh, which is great. Um, if you want to hang on to the topology, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I personally don't, especially if I'm working with like a conceptual maquette, like I'm going to just figure out the design first. And then if I really, so we're going to create like a frame for the helmet, like the face to actually sit on. And I'm going to turn the uh, wax modifier strength down just a little bit so that what I'm working on feels a little bit more mechanical. Again, guys, take advantage. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to throw them up. So some of the other sculpting brushes that I use for mechanical stuff is like hard polish. So I can just hit these edges and it creates that nice hard surface. And then I'll go into solo mode just so I can see like undersides. And typically if it's not being seen, I don't worry about it too much. But I'm just going to go under and clean that stuff up, ditch solo mode, and continue distorting this stuff. Um, what I'm going to do now is create that front helmet because it looks kind of like a bonnet or something. And so we want to clean this up so it looks a little cooler. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just append another sphere into this scene as a subtool and move that into position. And I'm not going to worry about its uh, backside not being used or anything like that. Like we're just going to create a shape to then detail out. And I'm going to create some landmarks. where we can have some uh, ports and holes, that kind of thing, because we're going to get into the uh, mechanical brush next. And I want to play with the shape just a little bit to make him a little bit different than the other one. And I'm going to go back over to the anatomy and actually stretch this stuff out so it fits into it. So when I'm uh, concepting, I'll jump around a lot. Uh, and forgive me if, I'm, if I get hard to follow. But uh, I do try to keep it simple and like my subtool list very limited. But it does get to a point where I got to just start breaking some things off. and. That way I can control the design a little bit better. I wanted to go through here and show you the process of just what it, what you can do with all of these curves and all the, the really cool features that are sitting in here. So there you go. So you can see when you up the draw size, it balloons that curve out. And so then you can get something really interesting. Or it could be as, as small and as fine as you want as well. I'm going to add a little bit, of more length, little bit more length to that and then move it out of the way and then right back down. So it's a very organic, fun process of it, it's like playing with a ribbon or a shoelace. And so I'm using these like curves and these tubes here as a, as a, as a secondary like design flow. Like it's another thing that's leading the eye. Um, that I didn't necessarily have in the in the plans of the base mesh there, but you can see how it, it it's very easy to play around with it and come to some new directions. So I have a little bit of time left. What I want to show you now is um, you guys get the idea. Uh, it's it's just a matter of detailing this stuff out, really taking it further. So what I'd like to show you, a lot of people really like this. Um, right now it's very static, right? It's in technically T pose. It's a standard symmetrical pose. What I want to do is 
create some new layers for each of these subtools with uh, the use of Transpose Master. And I'm just going to do a mesh check real quick and make sure that no one's got Dynamesh turned on. We're assuming now that we have all of the detail that we want, all of the subdivisions that we want. And we're not going to make any more really gigantic changes as far as like extra subdivisions or going back to Dynamesh. That's not to say that you can't, but you have to do a little bit of trickery to, to, to go back and forth like that. But ZBrush makes it very easy, very free. So I, I did that with this, uh, with this character here. I went back and forth after I posed it even and made more things Dynamesh and redid a bunch of stuff. Like it was countless back and forth. But assuming we're done and assuming we like this little thing, uh, what I'm going to do is open up my plugins and go into Transpose Master and I'm going to hit T-Pose. So what this is doing is it's taking all of these subtools, all four of them, um, and combining them into one mesh. It's a whole new tool. And this is why it's important to keep your base mesh, uh, even, if you're, even if you're working with Dynamesh, uh, a little bit lower because it makes it a lot easier to, to pose. But it all depends on where it's going in the end and where, where, where you want to take it. It's really all up to you. So I'm going to pose this guy real quick. And it's going to be a subtle thing, but it's going to be enough that makes it a little bit more interesting. And the way I'm doing this is I'm just painting a mask to exclude the areas that I don't want to affect. And I'm going to turn symmetry off because we're going to start putting some bend in this. And we're going to make him a little bit more menacing, maybe. And we'll paint a mask up here. And I want to exclude all this stuff. I don't want that to be affected. And I don't want this to be affected. But I do want the body and that helmet to, to bend. And it's all based off of where you draw your transpose line. So that's basically the anchor point. It's a lot like rigging or a, uh, uh, you know, skinning and weighting a character. It's just it's, it's very, very similar. And so it's, it's a back and forth with checking your, your masks rotating it to see if like that's the direction that you want, going back through and adjusting, moving, tweaking. And I'll use snake hook at this point too. Like I'm I'll I don't limit myself to just transpose lines. Like I'll use the sculpting brushes to sculpt the pose when it's all together even. Okay, so this will be the last little movement that I make here just so that you guys can see how all this is going to work. Not really sure what this post says about the character, but it's doing something other than just standing there statically. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn layer on and hit T-Pose to sub-T. What it's going to do is analyze all this stuff, and it's going to go back and apply it all to each sub-tool as a new layer. So now you can see if I go through and I open up my layer menu, there's a new layer there that I can turn on and off, and you can especially see it here with the body. If I turn that layer off, it snaps right back into a symmetrical pose. I can continue doing my sculpting, and then I could check what that looks like when it's posed. So a lot of this was done uh, by hand. Uh, I didn't use very many textures. It was all just a matter of masking. And I'll show you really quick the type of masking that I like to use. Uh, you can do mask by smoothness. And you can see that it it just popped all that detail out. And it's just a matter of like inverting that mask and filling in those areas. Or you can also use uh, peaks and valleys. And you can see there it, pr it presents like a whole new graphical image. Like the character looks completely different with that mask on it.